It is a privilege to be joined on the summit today by the head women's basketball coach for the Southern Nazarene University, Crimson Storm, Coach Trent May, in his fifth season with the program. Coach, first, congratulations. Winners of the Great American Conference Tournament, second time in three seasons that you all have come away as tournament champions. A 57-46 victory over a very tough Harding team in that final one versus two matchup. That doesn't happen all the time, but you all came away. The number one seed, you guys have been the best program in the league all season long, and it was shown in the tournament. So congratulations. I appreciate it, Joey. Thanks for having me on the show and appreciate your time. Coach, take it from there then. Uh, not only a big victory against Harding, two more along the way. You got a victory against your rival also in Oklahoma Baptist to get to that tournament championship game. But tell us a little bit about this weekend and, and what you saw from your team. Well, it's, it's you know, for first and foremost, it was a tremendous season. And, um, you know, you, you get uh, it's, it's amazing. You get all the way through and um, you had one blemish on the record, and then uh, then you got to do it again and turn around and, and play those you know most of those well, all the teams for th the third time, you know. And it's it's like you you can celebrate a long season because it is a long season. You starting way back in um, you know the uh, early December, and then um, and then in a quick weekend you have to um, claim the top spot again. And so uh, I'm just proud of our girls from from so many uh, from so many aspects, you know. And, and then again, I know you said that's uh, I get to talk about a few things and. Um, but I just, those girls, um, they won my heart a long time ago, but they keep uh, adding to it each and every day. Um, they're, they're just an amazing group of, of uh, girls who, who really have believed in what we've done from the onset and uh, buy in extremely well. Um, but they're just, you know, from, as far as them as individuals, they, they're just uh, an incredible group of people. Um, I'm super blessed to be able to be surrounded by them daily, to be able to coach them, um, to be their head coach. Uh, it's a privilege an honor. Um, and they just, their, their buy-in is just a, unique in the standpoint of like, it's just whatever we decide as coaches and however we're going to do things and whatever, how the program's going to be ran. And they, they buy in and they agree upon those things. And then they, you know, they back it up by just by their actions. And so um, just a great group of individuals and great group of people. And i um, just thankful that um, we got to go on a great run this year and uh, definitely thankful for my staff there. Um, I don't deserve them. Um, I say that all the time. They are phenomenal. They have done so much for this program, and they're not even in a calendar year yet. And so uh, blessed, blessed by them and their hearts and uh, working with these players and the time they put in and sacrifices they make. And it's just a, it's been a, it's been a great year. And it's amazing that they're, they're all three new, um, along with uh, some new players and obviously mixed in with returners. But um, they fit in from day one. And, um, you know, it's just it's one of those things that, you know, God kind of ordains. I'm a big believer and. And um, not coincidences, but God incidences, incidences. And so my favorite verse is Proverbs 16, 9. that says, in his heart, a man plans his course, but the Lord determines his steps. And um, that's just lived, that's been a, a life verse for me because I've just seen it lived out so many times that I'm like, there's no way that was me. And I couldn't have, you know, I have plans, but when the Lord um, directs them and allow, I allow him to, things just get better and better. And so thankful for his leadership and guidance in my life and the path that um, our team's been on this year. So, so yeah, so then we get to the tournament as you, as you asked, um, and, and our girls just, you know, it's, it's, you know, you, you can look in your player's eyes sometimes and kind of wonder where they're at. Um, and sometimes you look in their eyes and you know exactly where they're at. And, and I think that's what gave me confidence from day one. I knew Southern Arc was going to be a tough team in the first, uh, first round. I always said if they make it to the conference tournament, I wouldn't want to play them in the first round because they can make it ugly enough and there can be enough jitters and enough, um, nerves that can uh, cause you to do things that you're not normally um, able to, or not normally used to doing um, that are uncharacteristic. And they, um, they did that uh, often throughout the, the, the game, but thankfully we got through that and um, got back to ourselves and we're able to make enough plays to win that game and then, you know, turn around. And thankfully we had that day off to prepare and, um, you know, strike it up again with OBU. And I think our girls played a very solid game. Um, again, they don't blink. Um, there's going to be, you know, things that uh, don't go well within the course of a, of any game out of any team that plays, but, um, our girls just keep making enough plays to get, um, to get things done. Um, and so that's, that was evident again on, on Thursday. And then there was a big moment. Some players were a little bit more silent than normal. And then a, a player as in Lauren Reether steps up and, you know, and knocks down, I believe five threes, um, and, uh, had a tremendous output, um, and then she actually hurt her hand um, in that game. And then that really limited her on Sunday against Harding. But we had other players step up in big ways. And so and that's what our team's been about. We've had multiple um, leading scorers throughout the year, which is great. Um, and so I just I love the fact that our girls really play complimentary basketball with each other. I'll take a breath and, and let you. 
that's all that's all right you give me a lot to soak in and i'm still in proverbs too i think yeah. we can learn a lot from from that passage of scripture all of us no matter how old we are and probably the, the older we get the more we need to recognize that uh, coach you know with what you were talking about there and all these players i want you to to visit about them but but one of them in particular hannah giddy we need to mention her she was the tournament mvp and and definitely had a fantastic performance the, over the three games uh, in which you all played in Shawnee at Fire Lake Arena this past weekend. 24 points in the championship game, really shined in that game. 19 points, 18 points in the other two games, respectively, averaging 20.3 points per game, 9.7 rebounds per game, too. And that's just really, those are the highlight numbers to what she yeah. did and, and really what she meant to the team, I'm sure. Yeah, you know, it's, um, again, back to the individual. She's She's got such a big heart. She's come in from day one and fit so well into our program, into the culture, provided great chemistry to, um, to, our, you know, to her teammates um, and, the, and our staff. Um, she's a hard worker. Um, she's um, She loves the game, um, but she loves her teammates. Um, and then, you know, you just, so you take that and then you you, you put that in, a, in the unique position of absolutely being coachable and being willing. Um, you know, it's amazing. She's actually, as, as well, she's played this year. I think she's received more criticism than she has praise because there's, as a coach, you know, when someone's doing well and you're going, yeah, but they still have more, you know, and you, you, and it sounds like, I think this day and age, people are like, ah, oh, coach is never satisfied. They're just greedy. They, but you go, no, 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 you really have more in you. Um, and I think that's the, that's the job as, as any staff is to make sure that you're maximizing the players, um, you know, uh, skill sets as much as possible. Um, and I, I really believe, you know, and this is her her um, first year at SNU, but third year in college. Um, she had the COVID year as well as a lot of athletes uh, do. Um, but she has um, she has a unique ability to continue to get better. Like she has not tapped her ceiling yet. And so, you know, for us, that's a, that's a great thing. I think it is for her as well. I think she knows that how how good she can be, and she'll put the time and, and efforts into uh, get where she needs to be. But tremendous, tremendous tournament. Um, she is, she, she's kept getting better and better along the way. And, and um, I think when you, when you find that um, switch of confidence and realize that, Hey, that, that you have no ceiling and you know, it's, there's a lot of great things that can happen from that. And it was very evident for her being tournament MVP. Definitely earned it in the great American conference tournament. We're speaking now with Trent May, who is the head women's basketball coach at Southern Nazarene university on the summit right here on Midwest sports nets, YouTube channel. I encourage you, please like the video, please subscribe to the channel. It really does help. We talk about small college sports and more throughout the Midwest and beyond. We like talking about all of these things, including uh, what you all are doing in Bethany, Oklahoma, Southern Nazarene, the women's basketball team, second automatic bid to the NCAA tournament in three years. I know that uh, has to, to mean a lot to you, and we'll talk about uh, the trip to the NCAA in just a moment. But so many players on this team that have – uh, given so much, so many contributions, and I, I, as you talked about, it could be a different player every single day. And it, it, yeah, absolutely. And so I think again, if you talk, about, if you look at the all tournament team, um, you have Georgia Adams, who's a big returner for us and um, had a tremendous year. If there's a newcomer of the year and in the in the conference, there, there's not. Excuse me, the, or sorry, most improved player. Um, there's not, but also in the in the in the country, I don't know if there would be. I don't. I think Georgia would would uh, claim that. Uh, spot um she has done a tremendous job this year her confidence has skyrocketed and that's a huge thing in female sports and she found it and found a switch and um you know she's she's really been a bright spot for us in many many ways this year and so um you know thankful for her abilities and her her just resolve and continuing to get better um then you have cassandra awat um, who's had a tremendous season as well and um, you know, she just finds ways to, to get things done. Um, sometimes it's the dirty work. It's the hard jobs. It's the, you know, it's the fighting for the rebounds. And, and she is very, I love that she is stingy and selfish with those because that's, that's what you want is, a, is you know, is the, is the things that, you know, her selfishness actually helps the team in, in that regards because she wants all the rebounds. And, um, you know, it's been huge for us that, that uh, this year that she's been on the glass that hard. Um, and then Emily, Emily Monahan, very steady and just, I mean, she is a hard nosed defender and, and plays so hard and fearlessly. And, you know, you look at her sometimes and it may, the stats may not be there, but you can't measure all the things that she does on the court and how hard she plays and defends. So then you round out the starters with, um, you know, Lauren Rether, who's been very steady as well. Great assist to turnover ratio, very uh, smart, you know, floor leader for us and has done a really good job. And then off the bench, there hasn't been many off the bench, but Peyton Jones is, you know, um, she's she's been a a warrior for us, um, and so she's put a lot of a lot of um, uh, time as far as just you know understanding that um, this is what we need in a specific role, and she's embraced that. And it's not always easy when you. She used to be a starter, 
having to come off the bench. And um, but yet she's um, she's had some big moments and um, and you know thankful for her ability to be a team player and understand you know what was needed this year. Coach, you know you you mentioned all those names too, and I think what a luxury that has to be for you because uh, Peyton Jones coming off the bench, she's a former uh, all tournament team member, Great American Conference, and and you right. actually have two tournament MVPs because Cassandra Watt was a tournament MVP a couple of years ago. Sometimes you get a tournament MVP and they graduate and move on. You you right. don't get to have that much time with them. Uh, what a luxury you have to have all that talent on your team. Yes, it's you know again thankful, blessed. Um, it's been it's been great. But you know again it's 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 the talent is there. But I love that the the drive um, within them to um, want to get better, to put the team first and to understand, you know, what's at stake. And, and so, you know, you have a lot of really good individuals, but collectively when you put them together, very strong unit. I'm thankful for their their hearts and, and being receptive to those things. Coach, you punched your ticket to the NCAA tournament. You earned the automatic bid out of the Great American Conference into a brutal central region. And yeah. the central region is just pretty much brutal. doesn't matter what sport it is. I mean, right. it's be a, a tough place to uh, try to get out of that region to go any further, but you make the NCAA tournament and you will travel to Duluth, Minnesota to take on Minnesota Duluth, number nine team in the country, top seed in the region. And uh, you'll be playing on their home court. So talk about yeah. that. Well, first of all, you know, uh, we were hoping for a little warmer weather, you know, I wish we were in a, in, in a Florida region or something. Uh, looked up that weather last night and I'm like, you know, that's uh, it's going to be cold, but that's okay. It's a good thing we play basketball and we'll be inside, right? Because that's where that's where it matters. And so, but um, yeah, it's uh, it'll be a, a good experience. I like the fact that we get to, you know, fly together as a team. It's just different than being on a bus, obviously. And, you know, so it's just fun to be in the airport and look all look all the same and, you know, represent SNU. And um, and so, uh, so excited for that. Um, but yeah, there's going to be some really good basketball, you know, and th there's so many unknowns right now. And that's what the national tournament's about. You try to familiarize yourself as much and your team as much as possible over the next few days. And then it's, you know, it's, we, we haven't been really an underdog this year. And so it's one of those things where you go, okay, we'll embrace that role. And, you know, I, I didn't think we were an eighth seed to be, to be honest, but that's where, that's where it's, uh, <laughs> excuse me, it's where, it, where we ended up. So you embrace that and go, hey, we're in the tournament. So let's let's do, um, you know, put our best foot forward, man, and leave it all in the leave it all in the wood and and see where we get. But it's, um, you know, I I, I like our team. Um, I like the fact that we've had so many close games this year and so many opportunities where it could have been not our day or not our night, and our girls found a way to win games. And so, you know, whoever we play, man, they're going to have their hands full because we're going to bring everything we have to the fight. Um, and I and I love our chances just from the standpoint of going, hey, it's um, we played really good basketball throughout the year and mul multiple different, um, you know, um, opportunities. I mean, it's just it hasn't been the same. And, you know, we a lot of different teams that we played and zone and man and press and all these different ways and all these actions that we've seen. And so, you know, I think uh, no matter what, uh, I think we'll be well prepared. Coach. One last thing, and and that uh, is, uh, I'd like to bounce off something you said. It's it's tough to be an eight seed, but again, we talk about the tough region. But I I would not see you as an eight seed either, simply because of the the season you've had. I mean, twenty one and one in in league play. That's a phenomenal record. The one loss you mentioned, you come back, you you get uh, uh, you get the better end of that one ultimately in the tournament championship. Right, right. Get Harding one more time, twenty. Five of the last 26 games you all have won. 17 consecutive wins coming into this one, 27 and four on the season. Uh, Coach, it's just been a really, really good year. And, and I know it, it may not be time to reflect just yet, but wow, that that's that's a lot to talk about in one season. Well, I appreciate that. Yes. And and you know, I I, I fully um, embrace that. And you know, I you know, you definitely don't uh, start counting all those things yet, but it's been it's been just a, like I said, a great run. And, you know, and when you do it with the right people, it's it's it just magnifies that even better. Um, just it's it's so fun to be able to, you know, have players that accentu accentuate the right things and um, stand for the right things and do the right things. And they put this program and university above themselves. And so um, you just can't beat that. You know, it's just like I'll just bring it back to this conference tournament this last weekend. You know, there's a. Um, I actually attend Life Church here in the city, and there's a Life Church right, a campus right by our hotel in Shawnee. And you know, opened my window or opened the curtains to the window when we checked in and saw that church. And I'm like, Lord, I'd like to be at that church on Sunday. You know, um, I'd like to really attend that specific location. And so, and then we did. And so we actually, you know, we took uh, a few girls um, to church. Um, you know, on championship morning. Um, I had my family with me and, and so took some of the girls over to church. And so it was great to spend time and worship with them, you know, before we take a championship game. And, and again, that's, that's the thing I love about being at SNU and being a head coach here is, is that you, you get to live out your faith and, 
you know, regardless of what kind of day it is or how important the day is, there's nothing more important than uh, putting the first things first and keeping the main thing, the main thing. And, um, and that's Jesus Christ at the forefront of those things. I agree with you coach on, on all facets. And yeah, that was, that was very nice. I mean, you were within walking distance. So I uh, got to got, yeah. <laughs> just got to take the, the, the team right on over to that. Well, coach again, Congratulations to this point on the year. The season is not over yet. Tip time is 5 p.m. on Friday, March 10th at Duluth, Minnesota, taking on Minnesota Duluth. Uh, again, top seed in the region, number nine team in the country. The Southern Nazarene Crimson Storm Tournament Champions, regular season champions in the Great American Conference this season. Coach Trent May, it is always a privilege to get to visit with you. Uh, thank you very much for taking time with me today as you all are getting ready to head north. Joey, thank you. Appreciate your time and what you stand for and uh, mean a lot to our program. Thank you. Thank you, sir.